Have you ever wanted to learn Pro Tools but just felt overwhelmed by the learning curve that comes with it? My name is Robert Rodriguez Del Toro. I'm an engineer, producer, composer, and the proofreader for the official Pro Tools manual by Edgar Rothermick. And over the next few videos, I want to talk to you about getting started in this new version of Pro Tools so that you can start making music today. Let's do it. Get started by opening up a Pro Tools session and just going from there. How we would go about, you know, making a track from scratch from the start. So this is going to be for Pro Tools 2020.11, the very newest version of Pro Tools. As you can see, you've got a brand new logo looking very nice, very sleek. One of the cool new things you're going to notice is that Pro Tools defaults now to dark mode, already looking different. Look at that. Those of you who have never used Pro Tools, you're getting a, a lovely looking introduction to it. Didn't used to look like this. And it defaults to this new dark mode. We're going to go ahead and click OK because for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. Now, when you open a project, we have the dashboard and you get three options. Create, Recent, and Project. Create is to create a new session, obviously. Recent is to see your most recently worked on sessions and projects. And Projects is a version of a session that is made for collaboration with other people using Avid's online cloud-based uh, project sharing software. We are going to go ahead and create a new session. So let's do it. Let's just call this test for now. And let's break this down here. It asks you how you want to save this, whether you want it to be a local session or a collaboration cloud based project, as seen here. You can create from a template, definitely a whole other topic on its own. You choose your sample rate, your desired bit depth, and the file type. Typically, we're going to keep it wave, it's universal. It works. 48K for me, nothing wrong with 44.1. Always have it 24 bit. That's just a standard good resolution that you want to use. Your IO settings last use is fine. Uh, if you want a clean slate, like if you rename stuff in your IO, which will be a topic we cover later, Stereo Mix will always give you a clean slate. That's up to you. Most of the time, I don't touch it. Here's something that you definitely want to have marked though prompt for location versus location uh, pre-selected and what prompt for location means is that when you hit create it's going to ask you where you want to save it if you hit location it's going to default to whatever is listed right here now I always have prompt for location but be wary new Pro Tools users because when you first open Pro Tools it defaults here and if you're not paying attention you hit create just opens up the session and if you don't know where that default location is then you're gonna have trouble finding it so I always have prompt for location on because I want to make sure that I save it to my hard drive and I don't want to forget where I put it I want to know I put it somewhere always a good idea to have this checked now we're gonna hit create and this prompts where I want to save it we're gonna call this test we're gonna save it to the desktop for now and before we do this notice that it creates a folder this folder is our hub this is going to hold our audio files when we bounce it's going to create our bounced files if that's how we choose to finish our session clip groups which is all the little audio files that we record and cut up and do everything it gets put in here session file backups which is also another topic we'll go into later the actual pro tools project video files if any and the wave cache which is very important. If you're ever sending a session, always include the wave cache. So let's open up Pro Tools now. We have the edit window. This is where we can see our track lanes. And we have the mix window, which is where we see our faders. Right now they're both empty. So let's get started. In order to create a track, we're gonna hit Shift Command N. Shift Command N opens this up for you. There will be a more in-depth version of this, but I just want to show you this for a quick look of what Pro Tools generally will look like. So we hit Create, and boom, there's our track. We have a track, we have a section for comments, inserts, A through E, then F through J, and then our sends for buses, auxes, however we want to use that. Over here, we have the input and the output section. 
we hit command plus to switch between the edit and mix window we now can see this guy right here we have a fader has some of the same things this right now I have it set to show inserts A through E then sends A through E we can customize all that but before we wrap up today I want to show you the most important part of your setup process and that is under setup going to your playback engine this is where you select your interface for me I have it set to built-in output right now Pro Tools aggregate is, is basically Avid's own unique driver that allows you to link multiple interfaces together using their own software. Pretty useful. I've used it before on, on a session where I linked two eight input interfaces for 16 channels and you know it actually went smoothly. No no major problems with like buffering or, or lag and stuff like that. We're going with built-in output. Buffer size, we're gonna leave it here. I'll go into detail about that later. And we're good with that. So this is how you open up Pro Tools. This is how you get started. And in the next video, we're going to go into detail about creating tracks, the different kinds of tracks, and getting started recording. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you all in the next one.